Hey, all right, it's time for <laughs> one more HG00 kit, the O Gundam. In the last video, we took a look at the Type ACD version, which is the original Gundam tricolor scheme version of this. This is just the gray color scheme version, but this one has this very cool effect part in it, which is a big selling point of this kit, which was why I originally picked it up, was I thought it just looked very cool. Other than that, I think we can basically expect everything that was the same with the ACD version of the kit. So let's go ahead and pop it open and take a look. All right, guys, so you just gotta love that majestic box art here on this, even if you're not that big of a fan of the 00 series in general, which I kind of am not that big of a fan of the series in general. There's plenty of mobile suit designs in it, though, that I do like. This is definitely one of them. And this box art and price make this kit one that is very difficult to resist. As this came out only for 1200 yen, so you should be able to find this kit for around 10, 12 bucks, something like that. No more than like $15 for this kit, which is great because although the kit is relatively basic, it comes with this very nice effect part here for the back, which is going to look very cool. So this kit came out in 2009, and it is number 52 in the line. It's amazing how many HD Double kits that they made. But there's a bit on the bottom of the box they're showing about the GN Feather. Over here, we got some more action shots of this. It's basically the same as the ACD version, except now it's all in grayscale. Basically, that's gonna be the only difference aside from the effect part there. Obviously, here's how it looks just straight out the box. We got a bunch of nice articulation as we've seen. And then there's how it's going to look on the front and back. I think it looks really cool in this color scheme, by the way. I, I've always liked this version of it uh, as well as the color scheme. I like the tricolors, but I also like this color version as well. We've got some more information there in Japanese, but let's go ahead and pop this open and see. We've got our instruction manual and two bags of runners. This once again is in the smaller size instruction manual. We've got the box art recreated with the kit here on the front. Not with the effect part though, that's kind of interesting how they went with the, like the just digital effect for the background instead of using the actual effect part included with this. But once again here on the bottom, we've got some illustration work of the Gundam and the pilot, some information all there in Japanese. On the inside, we got some more information here about the weapons, standard beam rifle, shield, beam saber combination here. There's the type ACD, and then just some really nice shots of the kit, the effect parts, action poses, stills from the anime, color guide down there at the bottom, parts list here on the inside, construction all through there, and then the last bit is just about how to mount it onto an action base, which is unfortunately not included with this kit. This is like one that you really think that it would have benefited from having an action base included with it, because it comes this effect part but yeah no action base in here hmm. so first off unfortunately this sticker sheet is a little bit more extensive than with the previous kit with the regular version you just have the dark color one there for in the GN drive and the eye sticker but in this one we have these ones which will go on the front and back skirts and a couple other more stickers here which I think will go like on the head just to adjust the colors that's unfortunate once again runner PC 001 for our polycaps here in standard gray and here's a look at that beautiful effect part, and I was wondering how the effect parts look because sometimes effect parts look good on the front and the back, and sometimes they have a definite front and back. And in this one's case, it definitely has a front and back. The back doesn't look like basically anything. This is definitely the side that you're supposed to see, so that's unfortunate. If you have it on like a rotating display or something, or if you had it on somewhere up on your shelf where you can see the back, if you just have it up on your shelf, and like the back's just gonna be facing the back of your shelf and it's never gonna matter, then that's fine. But if you have it in any sort of display case where you can see the back, it's kind of disappointing that it doesn't look better than it does. But I mean, just the front anyway, it does look pretty nice. So here's our A runner, which is in once again in four colors. We got some dark gray all throughout most of these parts, a little bit of red up here, one clear part over there, and then a lighter gray color over here. These are those skirt parts, which are gonna be covering up in this kind of cream yellow color. So it's a shame that those weren't molded in the correct color, but they would have had to put them on a different runner as they can only put four colors maximum onto a runner. So that means they would have had to make some other parts yellow that weren't supposed to be yellow or make these parts in the wrong color or like not have red parts or something anyway. So it's understandable, though still sad. Runner B, which was white on the original version of the kit, is off-white on this kit. It's a little bit off-white. And lastly, Runner C here in gray for the parts which on the original kit were blue. These three parts were in blue. These parts over here were on the B runner here, but they've been removed from the B runner and moved to the C runner uh, to make them in the correct color. So you got some nice changes here to adjust for color accuracy, which is always good to see. But anyway, guys, that is all the parts. Let me go ahead and get it put together and then see how it looks. 
Alright guys, so here it is all put together. Now obviously this is basically the same kit as with the regular ACD version which we took a look at in the last video, so I'm not going to go over the articulation in this particular video, just know that the articulation is very good and you guys will see that once we get to actually doing some action poses and stuff with the kit. But as far as any new parts go with the kit, it's basically just the backpack part and that's all that's really new except for obviously the effect part. And while my review of the ACD version was overwhelmingly positive, I did have a couple of negative things to say about it. Basically just that it had a few seam lines on it, and it's a very simple kit. Some people might not like how simple it is and how lacking in detail it is, as it doesn't really have a lot of detail on the outside. Even though it's a very old kit, I think it's perfectly fine, for, especially considering its age. This particular version does have one more notable negative point added into the mix. And that would, of course, be the added stickers with this kit. With the original kit, we had stickers for the eyes and stickers for the GN drive condenser, whatever, in there underneath the clear part in the chest. Now we have these yellow stickers on the front and back skirts, which, I mean, are kind of fine. As we saw in the unboxing, it would have been nice if those were, you know, actual separate yellow parts, but I understand why they weren't. And then up here on the V-fin, that V-fin is just white and it's just got yellow stickers on top of that. Now I think I did a pretty alright job as it does, it's not very obvious. And then like down here, if you're looking at the kit from a distance, you're not going to notice that there's stickers. It just would have been nice if those were separate parts, but like I said in the unboxing we saw that it would have been quite difficult for Bandai to do that, so you're just kind of out of luck. You just have to repaint them if you don't want to use the stickers. Also, right here in the center of the crotch has another white sticker to cover up this piece which is darker gray like that underneath. So I'm not going to fault the kit all that much really for the stickers. I just wanted to point it out to you guys if that's going to bother you. I, I Honestly, they're pretty easy to repaint if you wanted to repaint those. Maybe not necessarily the easiest color to reproduce if you're not airbrushing. I'm not sure how easy this color would be to find just out of a spray can though. But a quick peek at the accessories here. We got the shield which is the same, just obviously just in different colors now. The beam rifle which is the same. And technically the kit is only supposed to have this backpack but you do have these parts left over to make the other alternative backpack style from the ACD version but they're not technically supposed to be used. You have them though if you want to use those. And while you have the beam saber handle up there, you don't actually have any beam saber effect parts included with this kit, which is kind of a negative point that I'll point out as well. It's always a shame when you have the beam saber handle and no actual beam saber effect parts. That said, if you have the ACD version, you got two of these and you only needed one, so you have an extra one if you have both versions of this kit, so then you've got one for each kit if you want to have them like that. But of course, the main draw of this kit is going to be that effect part, so let's take a look at how we are going to be utilizing that by basically just removing that cap off the GN drive there on the back, placing this on here, and then popping that back on there, and there you go. Easy as that to get your effect part mounted on there. Now of course the problem is you don't have a display base for it. At least one was not included with the kit, so you'll have to buy that separately. The kit can stand fine on its own, even if you don't want to have it up on a base, you just want to have it standing there with the effect bar. It is totally possible. Obviously the kit is gonna look better up on an action base, but if you really don't have one and you, or just for whatever reason, you just don't want to have it on an action base, you want to have it standing, you don't have any issue with that, so it's totally possible. Now let's talk about one other issue. Now let's say you have an action base and you want to be able to do a pose like where you have the legs down like this, sort of like angel style like that. And then you can't really utilize the action base adapter point up between the legs because that's just not going to fit in there. Fortunately, they gave you an action, a place to plug the action base into the back skirt like we saw with the ACD version. It has the same thing that you just slide that little bit up and you can plug the action base into the back. That works perfectly for this, except that the kit will then tend to lean off to one side. Now it's a little bit unbalanced because I have the shield on there, so let's take off the shield and try to make the weight as balanced as possible. You can kind of get it balanced all right, and you might be thinking, well, if you have just the shield on one side and the beam rifle on one side, that should sort of uh, counter the weight and it should be pretty even, but it's not. The shield weighs more than the beam rifle, so that doesn't really work. I tried that as well. Obviously though, the easy fix would be just to get a little bit of masking tape or something, just wrap a tiny little bit of tape around there or add some glue or something onto there. Very easy to just make this peg a little bit wider so that's just a tighter fit in there. That's the only thing you really need to do. Just make that peg so that's a tighter fit into the back skirt. But just thought it's something that I would let you guys know about. But alright guys, so in conclusion, as we're taking a look at some action poses with this kit, again, it's a really cool kit. Basically everything positive and negative that I had to say about the ACD version still stands for this version. It's a really great kit to pose. It poses really well. The articulation is very nice. It's solid. You don't have any loose parts or anything like that. You got a couple of stickers. You got a couple of seam lines. For a kit that's over a decade old, an HG kit, that's not really that big of a deal. It doesn't. It's not like super detailed on the outside, but again, 
considering what it is, it's I think very normal. You have that really cool effect part which is great, but then you don't have a stand included which is not so great, so it's kind of, you know, not that big a deal. Again, it's pretty easy to just get a stand or just whip something up is pretty easy to do. Or even without a stand, it does stand on its own two feet, so. A lot of kind of very small pros and cons about this kit that basically balance themselves out, in my opinion. Overall, it's a really cool kit. If you guys are fans of the design, I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's a pretty cheap kit as well, so I mean, it's very affordable if you can get your hands on it for near the list price. If you ask me which version of the kit I prefer, honestly, I really like the kind of alternate color scheme of this one, and the effect part is really cool. Cool. So I'd probably have to say this one is my favorite between the two, but let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Which one is your favorite or which one is your preferred version of this kit? And as always guys, if you're looking for some HD kits or any other Gunpla, of course you can check the link and the coupon code to USA Gundam Store down in the video description below. Big thank you to USA Gundam Store for making this video possible. So until next time guys, thank you so much for all your support, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's greatly appreciated as well. Hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.